It's not relics gonna get sacrificed. Ding. Yeah, so this is with Relic's effect on the stack, so this means that Drew's going to lose another card, because this is going to get milled over. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Does he have... Does he have... No, oh, he's got surgical on his hand! Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, my God! So, this game got a lot harder for Drew to that win. That is insane! So, let's go to the tape here. So no copies of Emrakul in Drew's list. Here. Oh, really? Oh, no, sorry. He does have one. Okay, okay. Be. I was going to say. That one. He also has a Sundering Titan. And he's got two copies of Ugin. Ugin's a pretty hard way to try to do it oh. against the artifact. Deck. And actually, pardon me, he actually just took out the he took out a Tron piece. Okay. It, which, it's, it's still very hard. Also awesome. Yeah, it's still very hard. I thought he was going to snipe the Karns when he hit with the Ghoul Caller spell, but he actually just said, you know what, give me the Urza's mine, and now you can't assemble Tron anymore. Yep. This game just went into hard mode for Drew. Now, can he still get the seven mana? Mm, I mean, yes, well, but it's six, hard. He's got 16 mana producing lands left in the deck now. Yeah. So it's hard. He's got to go all natural. And you know how hard it is for Tron to beat Sowing Salt. That, if you're looking for a card to specifically target that deck, that's what people go to. Sowing Salt on the second turn, really hard to beat. As someone who has been sewing salted many times, they can't even look me in the eye when they do it. Right. Because at least with sewing salt, you probably had a chance to resolve something good. Yeah. You know, you get one shot at Karn or Worm Quail. Here's Nation Stirrings. Now, Drew, you're just on the hunt for lands, my friend. I think sniping the Tron piece with Surgical Extraction is more powerful than getting Karn. Yeah. But less fun. No, I agree. <laughs> getting, rid of the, getting rid of the Tron land is definitely right. Yeah. He took Oblivion Stone. We'll see. There's the Expedition Map, because one thing, I want to check Ollie's deck list yet. He's got three main deck copies of Pit the Needle, so Oblivion Stone is not game over. And to be fair, that means that Karn's not game over either. Maybe it's Spell Sky time. It is. Get some protection. Get the shields up. Grand Phil will draw an Expedition Map. What Drew is doing right now is a tough way to try. I've been there. You just got to slog through it. And it's a slog. I mean, at this point, I, I actually, like, ghoul caller's bell in a race straight up against what's <laughs> left in Drew's deck. <laughs> I get a grove. Sure. Maybe another map. Yep. Working up to seven. Yeah, but it's also down a card in the deck every time. That's true. I mean, the, the race is happening from two sides now. Are you going to ring that bell? Yeah. Dong. Dong. Spellskite versus Urza's Tower. Ah, oh, the lantern is here now. Oh, yes. Now we're cooking. Now we get to see what both players are going to draw. I don't reveal the top card of each deck. I think Ali may have turned down his second card on accident. We'll see. All right, top card's a Pirate's Bottom, so we're all clear here. Expedition map on top of Drew Cranfield's deck. Fifth Dawn. Fifth Dawn, dude. Mm -hmm. Over a decade ago. Yep. I bet this card's like $100 or something ridiculous. It's probably, I, I, I'd be surprised <laughs> if it was that much, but it's more than it was four months ago, I'll tell you that. This is the one where you open the Fifth Dawn booster and you just threw it away. Because mm -hmm. you just didn't, wh why would this ever matter? There's no punishment for throwing this away. Yeah, how many Lantern of Insights have been thrown out after drafts? In Magic history. The number is very high. Is it O-Stone time? Yep. So we're going to try to get that deployed. Now Ali is going to play Abrupt Decay. Sure. 
Oh, he has some real magic cards in his deck. Yes, I, he does. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I just assumed it was all this kind of nonsense. Yeah, there are a few hanging out in there. There's the bell. Going to sacrifice his expedition map in response. Well, Cranfill, because he wants to make sure he gets a land. See, you can rebuild. He's already got land number six. <laughs> getting a worm coil engine, eventually getting a car, and it can be done. It's really hard, but it can be done. And Ollie's down to just one card in hand. Yeah. He's going to need a little help from the, uh, the lantern there. So let's see the top card now. Sylvan Scrying. So these are the cards that are going to get milled. Bell on top, Relic on top. I think we're going on Shrazi's way. Yes, we are. Pithnia on top. Another Bell. All right, pass it back over to Cranfill. On Shrazi, yep, you get to draw that. What's the next card? Sylvan Scrying. Now, how does Ali stop big creatures? Well, in Snaring Bridge, there are four of those. Mm -hmm. So that's his answer to Warm Coil Engine. He's got to find it, but for now, that's his answer. He's also got some life points to work with. Yeah, this is not a particularly fast clock. Now, it, it's dangerous from uh, Antrazi's side because both Karn and uh, Oblivion Stone allow Drew to break out of something like in Snaring Bridge, and he's only got so many pithy needles. Needle's going to come down. We'll get confirmation on what it's naming. It's either Karn or... Oblivion Stone. Those are the best names against Green Redtron. And he did go with Karn Liberated, so that's shut down. Now here's Infernal Tutor. So let's see what he's going to tutor up now. Doesn't have to show. This is, this is the honest Infernal Tutor. I, I mean, it, the path, if I'm in Ollie's spot, now granted I'm a novice with this deck. Yeah. Is just go get in Staring Bridge and prevent Drew from ever drawing Oblivion Stone. Sure. With your, with your bell. Because you've got Karn locked up. Right. He's not getting the 15 mana for Emrakul. Because I, 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 he's missing four lands. And he has, yeah, I think it's almost impossible. And your Insaring Bridge still has that covered anyway. Yeah, sure. That doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, good point. Yep, so now we're going to Belltown. Karn, you can draw that. Yep. <laughs> oh, this deck is truly adorable. The best card in your deck? Sure, that's fine. And he's got all this protection with Spellskite, too. That's a grove. There's a map. Onali even has an Academy Runes in his deck. You can't deck him. Even though he's base Jund, Glimmer Void lets you actually activate that thing. So does Mox Opal. Mm -hmm. You have to be pretty masterful to come up with his Lantern deck. Yeah, I don't know who did this, but yeah, it's truly something. Yeah, there's the bridge. And now the sleeper hold is cinched yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, it is. The ropes are so far away, yeah. too. And Drew wants to take a look at the graveyard. I, I don't think you're going to find any help down there. I mean, he's looking because of Academy Ruins, seeing what Ali can do. Maybe Ali just goes to the Pirate Spellbomb kill now from 26. Sure. <laughs> just <laughs> fire away. So many angles. Fire away, Ali. So many angles of attack. You can draw that girl with the burn wolves. What's on top? Chromatic Sphere. And golly, you'd let him draw that too. You want to cycle that? That's one less I have to do. I think the full enormity of the situation is starting <laughs> to register here for Drew. Uh, yeah, I, I just go. I can't attack. I can't do anything. What's up with Lantern of, of Insight? I literally just want to know what the top card of your deck is. That's, that's all it. that's going that's on That's all here. I want. Uh, the Codex Shredder now. Ollie not going to activate the land. I think he wants the Shredder. Well, it allows him to get back the Surgical... Oh, I guess the Surgical Extraction has been exiled. Yeah, it's long gone. Nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping we'd, we'd make that happen. Drew, you get to, you don't get to draw Ugin, sorry. 
we're going to bell that away. You're going to draw a card with Rucker Regenitus. Okay. Well, I've got another bell out here. So I'm going to activate that. So now there's two bell triggers on the stack. And Cranfill says, all right, I'm going to sacrifice my expedition map, give myself a chance to draw Ugin again. The thing is, in the worst case scenario, Ali can still sacrifice the Lantern, make him shuffle the deck, and Drew's got a big draw step coming. You laugh, that's a thing. <laughs> I'm pointing that out because that is relevant to what's happening in the game. It's just good to have outs. <laughs> and then you can get the Lantern back with the Academy Ruins, and we are doing it. Or the Codex Shredder. Yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> I have Ugin Shred it. Oh my god, no way. The Gear Pet A, he's got the <laughs> grid? Another lock. There weren't enough locks in the deck already. He's got the Gear Pet Aether grid? Oh, Ali. Another new hit. Yes. But it's being milled. Doesn't need it. Doesn't need it this game. Something inside. We're resolving a lot of triggers here. There goes Oblivion Stone. The grid's gone. Inquisition on top of the deck. Stirrings over there. So we resolved some. Uh, we resolved some. Some bell triggers. We're right where we need to be. Uh, now you might shred them good. Target player puts the top card into their library, and then and then rebuy. Mm -hmm. I like that. Two good deals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sunder and Titan on top of the deck. A lot of targets over there. A star. Again, Ollie doing everything here with, with close to perfect information. Yeah. Doesn't have to move unless Oblivion Stone or some other weirdo shows up. I would actually let Drew cast Sundering Titan because it does that little. It would actually blow up one of his own lands. Right. It blows up Drew's forest yeah. and then can't attack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another Shredder. Mm. No rush. No, no, no. We get to that next turn. No. Yeah, you can, draw, <laughs> you can draw the Titan is great. You can just have that. There's Naya Vugan. Oh, ooh, I like this. Yeah, return. Return the grid. Got to find a way to kill your opponent after all. But the Codex Shredders do that too. I don't know. It all, it's, well, this is kind of a choose-your-own-adventure, right? Right. This is... This is this is six of one, half a dozen of the other yeah, right here. Now you get to go to the Aether Grid. And this has never won a single game in Magic Origins Limited, even though many people have tried. It's not for lack of effort. Yeah, many have tried. Many have failed. I might have more wins in Constructed than Limited at this point. Going to Inquisition you. I ah, missed, but I just want an empty hand, so who cares? Tap two, un <laughs> tap two untapped artifacts you control. The Grid deals a damage to target creature or player. Oh, yeah. Couple extra artifacts out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a lot of mana. Gonna search up the Amarcruel. Maybe another colorless creature. Well, nothing besides Amarcruel has a hope of doing anything. That's true. You get a Worm Coil Engine. And again, Ollie can keep him off of Oblivion Stone by simply milling that over should it ever show yeah, up. Yeah, you never get to draw that card. And I, I don't think much else in Drew's deck matters. I mean, I suppose Ugin gives him some shot of bolting out, but now with the, the grid in play, you just have Ugin contained. You can actually shoot down Ugin. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ollie's got that covered. Oblivion Stone's on top of the deck, uh, not for much longer. Yep, Bell you. Looks like he's going to try to draw with the star. Drill at Admirably playing on, I must yeah. say. No, I mean, he's, he's done several sequences here where he's given himself the most possible looks 
at Oblivion Stone. Yes. I mean, he shoveled his decks at the right time. He's he's resolving his uh, stars and spheres at the right time. He It's not for lack of effort. Yep. He knows what he needs to do. It's just very hard to get out from under the spot. So Codex Shredder is on the stack right now. And so what he's going to do now is he's going to search with Eye of Ugin again just to shuffle his deck and give himself the best opportunity to have Oblivion Stone be the draw step. It's another clean look. Yeah. Because that's really his only way to win this thing. So Karn's on top. That's going to get milled from Codex Shredder. Now we get to see the top card. Is it O-Stone? Ooh. Ooh. Might ha now Ollie might have to use the lantern here. Yep. Shuffle that up. <laughs> and cash it in. <laughs> yep, need you to shuffle. Great operations here by True. Giving He's giving himself a gr uh, the best chance possible yep. to get to Oblivion Stone. What do we got? Okay. Hook. Not quite. Not, yep. Pyroclasm is horrible. And that's not revealed because the lantern's no longer there. Correct. And now the bell happens. Both players get milled. And now the, neither player reveals top card of the deck because you mentioned no lantern on the battlefield. Right. Okay. So perhaps Ali is going to want to activate his... His, uh, well, he missed a grid activation. Minor thing. Minor thing. But yeah, he's going to want to ruins back the, the lantern. It's too, it's too important right now. Reestablish the lock. Yeah. I wonder how Ali got that draw. <laughs> Did he find Ostone? Ooh, didn't get a good look. Cavern Souls on top of the deck now. No, it's an Ancient String. Ancient String's rebuy. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rebuy. It's a redraw. Yeah, it's a redraw. And it's got to be right now, because if Ali gets to draw that second needle, then it's fully locked yep. up. But if he finds it, I think Drew probably runs away with it. Yeah. Top card. That's, that's got to go. Shred it. I want to start with Shredder here instead of Bell, because he wants to draw his pivot needle. Right. Okay. Drew's going to... Activate Eye of Ugin again because he wants to shuffle away the Oblivion Stone and give himself the best chance to draw it again. Yeah, and with Stirrings, then he has an opportunity to just set it back in Stirrings, find it, put it in his hand, untap, cast it the next turn. Now, uh, that window might be closing because of the needle on top of Ollie's deck. Tower's gone. Next card, Stirrings. But Drew, Drew knows he can't afford to ha allow the Oblivion Stones to be milled out at all. He has to at least give himself the shot of finding it. The thing is, with Needle on top of Ollie's deck, I don't know how Drew gets out from under this. Yep, because he's found an O-Stone now, but I don't think... Yeah, he can't, like, cast and blow it in the same turn because yeah. he has no Tron. Another O-Stone. That won't be there for long. But then again, it might be perfectly fine that he draws it because... That needle's on top of the deck. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know how Drew gets out from the second needle. Eight cards in hand. Discard Ember Cool. Shuffle them back in, boys. And this is where the grid potentially becomes helpful. Yes. Because it's a way of Ollie winning the game without having to figure out some way to mill it out through Everkull. Maybe, that, maybe that's why the grid is in the deck now. It's also probably not horrible at containing some utility creatures. A little fun of grid action. You know, how thrilled is Infect to play against that card? Pro it's probably not great yeah, for them. Yeah, probably you know? horrible for them. And how thrilled is Ollie to play against Infect? Probably not happy. Probably not Probably not a great matchup. So we got two needles out there. One on card and one on Oblivion Stone. You never get to attack because of Snaring Bridge. Now he's going to have no cards in hand. And he gets to control your draw step. Now, in, in theory, Drew is very hard to mill out from this spot because he has the ability to Eye of Ugin for Emrakul, discard to hand size every single turn. Yep. But the grid then comes into play. Yes. 
And I think we've... I think now with the second needle, we've hit the point of no return. And yep. I like this concession from True. He could have kept this game going for a while, most likely, but realizes time is not his friend right now. He's no. just got to let this one go and try to pick up two games really fast. Well, Ali Antrazi does win game number one over Drew Cranfield. Lantern control of a game over Green Retron. We're going to start with Drew's sideboard. I'm hoping he's got some Nature's Claims over there. He does. Four copies of Rending Volley, three Nature's Claim, two Feed the Clans, two Spell Skites. Two Thrag Tusk, a Ghost Quarter, and a Pyroclasm. Three copies of Nature's Claim seem great in the matchup. A lot of utility lands in Ali's deck, so I'm fine with the Ghost Quarter coming in. And honestly, I, I think it's fine for him to bring in the two copies of Thrag Tusk and just try to beat down. Just try to get a clock. You just gotta get yep. something going. You gotta get a little crazy here. Uh, for Ali, two Graft Trigger's Cage, three Welding Jars, <laughs> Seal of Primordium, a Sunbeam Spell Bomb, sure. Uh, looks like an Ancient Grudge, three Pyroclasms, three Sun Droplets, and a Thought Seize. Um... Yeah, I guess <laughs> seals doesn't seem bad to me here. Can get behind the thought seas, you know. I, the welding jars are probably okay. I don't know. I don't say this a lot, but uh, beats me. I mean, <laughs> oh, you're not you're not an expert on the not archetype. An expert. The jars seem fine, and I, I can get behind the seal. The jars are probably good. The seal's probably good. The thought sees is fine if you know whatever. If, if you want more discard, right. sure. He's already got some some discard in his main deck. Uh, a lot of the cards in this in this deck in the sideboard, not surprising. They're dedicated to beating burn and aggressive creature strategies because it seems like this deck is just going to fumble around and die a lot in game ones against beatdown decks. So you see, you know, sunbeam spell bomb, three copies of sun droplet. It, it, it's a lot of focus on trying to shore up that matchup. Well, these players are going to shuffle up for game number two. We've got about 22 minutes when this game starts. We'll very quickly talk about the Star City Games Summer Sale that is happening right now. A new special every single day for you guys throughout the month of August. Right now, 25% off select promotional cards. Yeah, you can see there's a variety of judge foils, game day promos, uh, full art cards, some, some comic book and other ancillary promos. 25% off, and uh, I think it ends today, if I'm not mistaken. It'll end tomorrow. Tomorrow, excuse me. Because we got a new sale going up at 11 a.m. every single day. So you've got some time, but not a lot of time, because the special ends tomorrow. And then during the broadcast, we'll have a new one for you at 11 a.m., probably right around after round number 10 or 11, depending on how things do line up. But we'll have the new sale for you guys. But we've got all these sweet specials happening all summer long. StarCityGames.com for more information about our awesome summer sale. As we're going to get ready for more lantern action. The people wanted to see the lantern deck. Is it lantern action? It's laction. It's, it's a yeah, lantern it's, lack of a, action. There's a real lack of action here. There's not a ton going on. But, you know, it's, again, it's, you're, really, you're, you're watching someone actually put someone in a sleeper hold. On camera. Yeah. That's what's actually happening right now. I mean, his board is so embarrassing at the end of the game. It's truly it's, horrible. It's got, a, it's got him cemented. One timer wife is worth more than all of that. Yeah. I feel like it's... it's I want to call it a combo deck. It's, it's, a, it's a prison deck. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a prison deck. Because we don't see prison decks anymore in Magic. That's no. not really something that happens, which is probably for the best. Yeah, the, the games of Legacy are so explosive that you can't even assemble that kind of prism. I guess Chalice of the Void gives you that kind of angle attack. Vintage has prison style decks. I would say Workshop. Shops is a prison deck. Qualifies as a prison deck. Yeah, that's definitely a prison deck. In Standard, they don't really, you know, Wizards does not promote those kind of cards. No. You don't want a prison strategy running around. That'll, that'll cause people to not play. And, and this deck, is there's not even a single card you can point to that makes this deck go. It's just a weird collection of cards from the lifespan of modern. Yeah, which is actually kind of cool. Yeah, no, I, the, the decks that feel like they're celebrating the size of the card pool are kind of cool. It's, it's part of the reason I suspect Birthing Pot was allowed to be legal for as long as it was, even though it was busted. It was something where it made the format feel big. You yeah. were pulling creatures from all different sets and... Different interactions were coming up. You want modern to feel more than just it's a collection of standard decks from the last, you know, 15 years or so. Yeah, and Tumor Exarch would not have seen play without Birthing Pod. Exactly. There you go. You get to dial that baby up. And it was really good, too. Ollie going to take a look at his open hand. We look at the Pyrite Spell Bomb. Win condition. Looks like Drew's going to take a mulligan. Now, we saw this deck, I believe. A top 16 finish at Grand Prix Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Never got any camera time, but then people were kind of raving about this deck. It picked up a lot of play on Magic Online. You know, we got into this weird metagame where it was 
all of the Gristlebrand Nourishing Shoal deck and all of this on Magical Line for like a week and a half. Mm -hmm. And this deck had a really good matchup against the Gristlebrand deck. So they're like, ah, it's a two-deck metagame. Now everything's kind of where it should be. Yeah. But that was a real fun and crazy time for the modern players on Magic Online. Part of the reason that you see a lot of copies of Lantern Online, you know, relative to physical tournaments, is also just cost. I mean, this deck is not expensive to put together. Why is there so much mono red on Magic Online every single time you log on? A lot of it is cost related. People want to play for as cheap as possible, and in decks like Lantern, let them do that. Well, both players are going to start a little lighter on the hand. Prison strategies, they don't feel like they mulligan very well, right? It just depends on what kind of matchup you're in. I, I mean, some people just can't break out of, of your best draws, and then you can mulligan very aggressively. Drew does have a reasonable amount of interaction. Three copies of Nature's Claim on top of the Oblivion Stones and his copies of Karn. You know, he has some play. Even in the first game, Ali got everything lined up the way that he wants to, and Drew still had a couple windows there to find Oblivion Stone, yep. where he probably would have won the game if he did. So uh, the Mulligans are punishing for Ollie in this kind of matchup, but the decks that can't play back against you, all you need to do is do your thing. And Got close. Yeah. If anything, there's spots where Mulligans actually help you because Infernal Tutor is in your deck. Okay. Yeah. He's got, that's a, that's not a that you're up. trying to Mulligan. I'm just saying <laughs> it's, not, it's not that bad to do against the players who can't play back against you. And Drew down to five. Tron is a deck that can mulligan to five and still operate just fine. No, oh, that's not a hand that he likes, so he's down to four now. He's in some trouble, boys. Well, while Drew finishes one more mulligan, we'll learn a little more about the Season 2 Invitational Champion Ali on Trazi from Matthews, North Carolina. It's so not too far from here. Mm -hmm. Two Invitational Top 8s with one W. That was our Season 2 Invitational this year. Ten Open Series Top 8s with two wins. Oh, this is fun. Self-proclaimed best mixtape creator. A professional teddy bear namer. And then something that's actually true. <laughs> 2011 U.S. National Champion. Let me tell you something. Ali is too young to be the best mixtape creator. I agree. Mixtape creation, I'm basically as young as you can be where that was still an art to put together mixtapes. Ali is five years younger than me. There's just no way. It's a bold claim. It's a very bold claim. Here's an ancient stirrings. I'm willing to believe he's the best teddy bear namer. I won't argue that. I don't know. Kids are pretty good at that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm not trying to slight the man or, or denigrate his accomplishments. I'm just saying what he's claiming just has to be impossible. Lanamore Waste into the Codex Shredder. Now, if you mean mixtape by he's an aspiring hip-hop artist, I don't know enough to, about Ollie's bars to say one way or the other. But if he means, you know, putting together a tape for a potential significant other to display affection, if that's what he means by mixtape, it's impossible. He's too young. <laughs> that art was dead by the time people like Ollie were in high school. Ursa's power plan is being searched up here. You're very passionate on this. It's just true. <laughs> what gets milled over? The basic forest. Ghost Quarter is live. Like, if someone claimed that they were the world's best cartographer, I would just say, well, that can't be true. You're 28 years old. No one draws maps anymore. It has to be, <laughs> it has to be someone older than you. Cartographer, a magic card. It is. Very nice. Oh, another shredder. The clock just doubled. Yeah. <laughs> Get after him. Grand fellow draw. Remember, he's on a mulligan to five. But one, four. Oh, four? Excuse me. Yeah. You're right. You're right. But Ollie's deck doesn't close all that fast. <laughs> so he's got some time. He's got some time to work with. There's a Relic of Progenitus. And now a Power Plan. And a Chrome Sphere. Now pass the turn back. Shredja. There goes a Worm Coil. Shredja again. There goes an O-Stone. Ollie one tap. I take a draw. Oh, the grid's in hand already? Well, this is a weird tension, right? 
because the grid is one damage a turn, but the two Codex Redditors are two cards a turn. The math is very thin here. I'm not Hard gonna... to know what's the faster <laughs> clock. I would stick to my guns here and just go with the Codex Redditor, but you're playing against a deck with Emrakul, so maybe that's not even a route you can take. Yep. Maybe you just start doing one a turn. Time to draw. I don't know. Like I said, this is my first time yeah. watching the deck in action. I can't say with any certainty. Not an expert. No. Sacrifice another sphere. Get a little deeper. Well, now he's drawing these cards. I'm going to take him to the, I'm gonna take him to the shred. Well, the, then the Ember calls the issue, you know? I would do one or the other at least. There you dong, go. Dong, love it. Are we going upstairs? No. Oh, no, grit you. <laughs> yes. Down to 19 goes Cranfill. Like I said, Emrakul changes the calculus. Yep. You cannot mill this man out. It's got to be one at a time. One and a half at a time. <laughs> Play the needle two at a time. <laughs> the Ghost Quarter came down. He's already got the Forest out of Drew's deck. Yep, there's Needle. We'll get confirmation on what it's naming. It's either Carno or Oblivion Stone. I, I suppose it could be Relic. There are moments like what's happening right now with Ollie opponent Mulligan to four. Ollie's doing stuff where I would think to myself, I was playing this. Side. I cannot believe I showed up to a tournament with this. Because it would not take a lot for him to lose with this spot. And he's kind of been doing, you know, the deck's thing the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, Prelix is in response to the needle right now. So draw a card. And now we'll see what the needle names. I think we're going to see Ghost Quarter get activated in the draw step. Yep. Kapow. And no force search up because it got milled over. Does he have the extraction? Not yet. I think he's only got one card left in hand. Draw a card. Cavern? Get confirmation on what that's naming. Either Worm or Titan, whatever Wormquill Engine's name is. I can't remember if it's a Worm or not off the top of my head. What I do know is that Ollie's going upstairs with the grid. Speeding up. Yeah, Cavern naming Worm for Wormquill Engine. Academy Ruins is here. He can get into the real slow lock of activate the Shredder, get back Ghost Quarter, Ghost oh, Quarter you. That's a slow burn. Uh, Yeah, milling himself. Yes. And he's got the ruins in play, you know? Yeah. It's kind of abrupt to can hand. Yeah, double checking to see if he can actually cast it. Yep. Which he can. Clear for takeoff. And now one U. <laughs> a lot well, of ins, a lot of outs. What angle doesn't he have covered? <laughs> Lots of what have yous. Yeah, the bell. What do we have here? Maybe a little Sylvan Scrying. Please make sure you do so with Working our way back towards Tron. Yes. That'll resolve. We got a tower or a mine on the way here for Cranfill, I believe. I'll go with the tower. I think that I would prefer getting the other piece in case you get surgical extracted, you aren't losing a land out of your hand. I guess he's just playing it anyway. Yeah, so he's just going to play it. It's yeah. just fine. We're going to start with the shred. Are you targeting self? Bridge down. I like targeting yourself to get something back to the category room, yeah. so this makes sense. I dislike that he has mismatch and snaring bridges in his deck. <laughs> but yeah, I do like, I do like the target. <laughs> The bell was rung. Karn goes away as does Pyrite Spellbomb. Cards of similar power level. Mm -hmm. And now there goes Black well, Cleave Cliffs. One's in play and one's not, so. That's true. Not fair to compare them directly. And now one you're real good with the grid. Ugh. Are we going to ruin up? Yep, going to get Pyrite Spellbomb. Yeah, we're looking to burn him down. Take a draw. Play that Spellbomb. Cranfill will draw. Here's Warm Coil Engine. I guess Ollie's got to get his snaring bridge back. 
first things first, shred myself. All right, there's a codex shredder. Ring the bell. O stone gone, so is Spellskite. Now it's time to hide behind the bridge. And to you with the grid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, a lot of ins, a lot of outs. Bridge is the draw, and bridge is on the battlefield. Now, Cranfield does have a way out of this. Karn is one, even though there's a Spellskite. Spellskite is doing a lot of protecting here, because Nature's Claim would be another. But Spellskite is working overtime on this board. It's, it's curious, too, because, again, you know, Drew's on four cards. Ali's kind of gotten to do his thing. And Ali's grasp on this game still feels very tenuous. Uh, you know, he's not out of the woods by any stretch. Uh, Drew, as you mentioned, if he is able to get to Karn or just to Nature's Claim, uh, can undo most of what Ali's done here. Well, it's interesting because I, now that I look at the board and kind of survey things, the spell sky is going to be a problem. Drew has to set up in such a fashion that he can say, kill your spell sky, untap, and then do my thing. Yeah. So it's going to have to involve Nature's Claim, I believe. Or, you know, something in like a double Karn or something like that. I mean, he, he still has a way out, and now here's Karn. Yeah, I suppose the issue here with Karn is Ollie can go, all right, redirect to spell sky and use the grid just to gun down Karn. Lock him up. And so he's going to redirect there. Yeah, and now he can he can finish off Karn with with the crib. See ya. I had a feeling that you know, Gear Per Aether Grid would kill a Karn today. Yeah, I would have definitely won that bet. When I was prepping for the show, I just knew that I had to be ready for that. Granville will draw. Expedition map. He'll play that. He's got Tron. Got a lot of mana. I just gotta find an answer to that stupid bridge. He doesn't have a lot of them. And now the problem is that Ali can go ahead and, and get the spell sky back on top of his deck, recast it, and then set up kind of the same spot. Yep. And it's not like Drew has all the time in the world. I mean, we've been, we've been joking around, but these grid shots are adding up big time. Yes. Lantern of Insight's coming back. And Lantern may be too much to overcome here. With, with Ali being able to control Drew's draw step, it's going to require a lot of things to break Drew's way to get out from under this now. Yeah, Welding jar on top of the deck. That's a little bit of protection. I have Ugin on top here for Cranfill. Let's see if Ollie's fine with letting Drew draw the uh, the Eye of Ugin. Drew's going to start by just sacrificing his expedition map. Get a land out of his deck, shuffle it up. Yep, there's Eye. Eye is unique in the fact that it will let him shuffle, mm -hmm. like we saw in game one. And it does have some relevant-ish text, being able to search for Emrakul or Sundering Titan, what have you. Top card of the deck is the power plant. You can have that. Let's see what's next. Another power plant. You can have that as well. Take him to the grid, baby. Looks like he's going to start by ringing the bell. There goes Welding Jar. Nature's Claim on top, same with another bell. And I guess at this stage, it's, uh, you know, there's no harm in Ollie's side of milling him over when he has a dead card on top because Drew's likely to just shuffle his deck anyway. Yeah. Spell Sky's going on top. Spell Sky is going to break the Nature's Claim. Yep. So he can draw that one. And even tuning for Emrakul here is not valuable. Yep. Ali might just mill it away. Looks like he's. It looks like he is going to. I actually would fine. I would be fine letting him draw it. 
because it just kills a spell skype. I mean, that card's got to be better on average than than Drew's regular draws. Sure, there are a lot of bad draws for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Nature's Claim probably doesn't get Drew out of the spot, but I think it's more likely to contribute to it than the average draw that Drew's going to have. We got a mystery card coming here for Mr. Karan Phil. That's an Nature's Claim. And that's the one that's going to go away as he tried to avoid that situation. Now Urza's mine on top of the deck. You can have it. Let's see the next card. Nature's Claim. That's the turn back. I think it's, that's going to get milled away. Yep. Thanks, Codex Shredder. <laughs> that's a Stirrings. That one doesn't... That one's okay because it can find Karn. I think he's going to go stairs. I think it's lethal, right? It just burns him out and then sacrifices the Pirate Spell Bomb. Yeah. Put him down to five. Untaps, shoots him down to two, and then... Yeah, a little math here. I think on Trousy, he's found the winning combination of Gurupu, Aether Grid, and Pirate Spell Bomb. Along with Ghoul Color Bells. Sure, one more piece of crap just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie going to make him wait it out a little bit. Looks like he's going to go upstairs now. And he just wants to sequence this right if he's playing around a nature's claim. Yeah. Push down to three first, then two, then one, then zero, then respond. Mm -hmm. That is going to do it. Ali Antrazi going to win this match over Drew Cranfield. Two games, zero. Big smile for our Season 2 Invitational Champion here on the Open Series. He is 5-0-1 oh, with Lantern Control. He just put another person into the sleeper hold. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I'm not even sure what I just watched. Yeah, me either. It's just a, a bunch of really tenuous soft locks that Drew couldn't quite wiggle his way out of. And we've just been informed there's no backup match. Mm. What, a, uh -huh. what a surprise. What a surprise. Oh, Ali. You know, 